didn't actually catch it what Scout's um, summoner spell was. I'd love to see him take the teleport. I think you've got to try and deal with these side lanes. And especially if we start to see a few Cloud Drakes coming in, we know what Echo's like once he starts to get that ultimate CD or lane underneath his belt. So this is going to be heavily a case of, okay, can OMG get ahead in this early game and use that side lane pressure? Or will they fall behind and be forced to deal with the more skirmish and team fight style EDG have put forward? All on the line here. EDG win this series. It's playoff secured for them and top esports. OMG win this series. They knock out four teams below them here in the LPL. And suddenly we're left with only WE, Rogue Warriors, LGD underneath. So OMG, they need this as well. Their chances of making playoffs go up with a series win here. Also want to point out that if EDG win here, I am prediction king. But that <laughs> depends on the Monday, Raz. It does depend on the Monday because yeah. we need to find out what happens uh, if we're actually doing predictions for those days. But either way, that's important to know. I don't know if I can still catch either of you. You can't. I don't know. You didn't so go ballsy enough. I was so close. I, I, was so I had the E-star over IG prediction. That was my, that that was was my ballsy saucy. prediction, but... Wasn't enough. Just wasn't enough. And then uh, Clement caught up, but now he's about to eat dust. But in this series, I mean, <laughs> it could go either way, right? Like, we're at a point where OMG have upset quite a lot of teams and came into this split very surprisingly looking good. Uh, this is what we were looking at before on the bottom of your screen, though, just for the audience. Remember, EDG win and Top Esports as being thankful. That's what it says there. And then with OMG, they knock out Beachy, BLD, Sooning, and DMO. So the ability to really shake up the standings. Those Chinese lessons are really paying off for you, but <laughs> when we look towards this game, I want to start Thank looking you. at how these junglers are going to influence the map. I want to see Hacker in particular going towards this top lane. Curse should already start to win out in this uh, after the level four or level five. So I think if you can get Hacker up here just to start the snowball even sooner. Boomerang <laughs> Blade. Hope with the heal. A return trade though. Now possible for Hope and Mako. And they do get the better of it with Exhaust being burnt down by the Tarek, but also for Mako. And look, JJ, we said that he likes to be a little bit reactive. Well, he's found that the Summoner spell is blown in the bottom lane. Let's make these plays happen. Waves coming in. Boomerang Blade is there. JJ behind the spell shield used preemptively a bit too early. Sonic Wave with the resonating strike. The damage is coming through as Conqueror is now hit. But JJ simply pushing out the Sifa as SMLZ has run out of matter to stay in the line. Now, SMLZ is going to back. But don't forget that in future, when this poke starts to come through, he doesn't always have to back away. You still have the Tark to heal you up in these scenarios. But not having the mana really sucks for SMLZ, especially how, with how effective Hope can shove in these waves. Reverse gank now the potential, though, for Hacker on the top side. JJ spotted through the mid lane. Icon over the wall. A good phase dive. But Sonic Wave resonating strike forces the flash. JJ is so active. This guy wearing a Fitbit here in the early game. He's doing a lot of work on this Lee Sin, entirely different from what we saw in the FPX series where he's on this trundle. This is what I want to see from EDG early, making sure they can secure themselves that mid-game advantage where they can look to take these skirmishes and team fights and not have to deal or give the opportunity for OMG to set up for these split pushes. And after Jinu was getting each minion, he's kind of backing away there. You could see towards the top side, Hacker couldn't get in. So for Jinu, he holds on to summon as he able to hold his position in this lane. And now JJ is looking for his third lane to gank. Cursed in a bit of trouble, flashes away, wants to kill Jinu, but I don't think he can. And first blood goes to this proactive jungler. And JJ, third time's the charm, finds the kill. And this is going to help Jinu massively. We said that Curse will start to win out in this lane when he hits that level 4, level 5. We started to see it come through where that CS differentiation was already opening up. But now that's been turned a little bit with that guy. SMLZ, remember, has the spell shield as well, but it's all about timing. He flashes away, and it will block away the death sentence. But he flashed. That's the big win. He went in to get a deep ward, but didn't have the support of Cole, didn't have the support of Hacker. So sloppy plays coming through from SMLZ, and this is something we've seen sometimes from SMLZ going that little bit too deep and being punished for us. We know that with a Sivir and with the side lanes that they have on OMG, if they can't get the ball rolling, if they can't get Echo and Irelia into, I guess, a comfortable position, could be some early trouble built up by EDG's early success. And I want to see how EDG can force OMG into these engages. I'd love to see them starting to prioritize these early dragons, and that just draws attention from OMG, especially if you start to build up two, three, even going for that sole point as EDG. 
Infernal up in one. There it is. Teleport going to be used mid here by Scout. Look at where Jerger is, though, because it is about jungler's proactivity here in this early game by what we've already seen. Uh, Ward controlled on the bottom side from Hacker as he picked up the early scuttle. But now, this Lee Sin, he's hovering around. He's trying to finish off Krugs. But OMG are making a play towards the bot side. Here we go, straight onto Mako. Well, Dazzle is going to be flush and matched. That was nicely done from OMG. The pillar in the way as well. I think Mako just accepts his fate. And OMG finally strike back. And you said, how do we get Icon rolling? Well, OMG give you the answer, Hysterics. Make the play on the bottom side with the push that Icon has managed to gain for himself. But in this top lane, Curse, this is not the trade. Well, hang on. If oh, you get the flawless is. duet, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, baby, a solo kill. Well played by Curse. Taking out Jinu in this matchup, and we said Jinu's gonna struggle. We're seeing it more and more, and usually we see Curse on champions like the Orin, where he's still having these ma massive impacts. It's great to see him more on these carry champions, where he can really show his stuff. You can see when Conqueror comes through, and when you get that on-hit adaptive damage, Irelia is just nasty. And now with a kill, OMG back in the driver's seat. It's been six minutes. And it's EDG the, now setting up to try and get this dragon that we were talking about. If they can get a couple of these dragons under their plates, when we get to the 22, 23, 24 minute mark where OMG are trying to set up for these split pushes, they can force OMG to respond because they're on soul point or they're pushing towards the, the better objective. But exhaust them to hope this time around. He's in a one versus two. He's going to heal away. But a summoner burnt where you're in a bad position as Mako comes through but won't be able to get a trade back. SMZ and Cold have been doing a good job though of going aggressive in this lane, especially when you see the call that's come through from Hope. It's not really going to be a very offensive item, but then again, SMLZ opting for the Fairy Charm here to try and, as much as possible to get mana in underneath them to push these waves and force Hope to lose some of them. Didn't really sell the uh, oversell, I should say, or undersell. No, undersell. We didn't undersell the bottom lane. No. It is uh, going to be very passive to a degree until we see something like that. Icon, you cannot phase dive over that thick wall. And that's just unfortunate. He's going to pick up the blue buff here on Echo. Behind a little bit on CS, but he picked up the kill. He's got one in the bag, plus the Hextech Revolver. So well on the way to the Protobelt first item. While we look towards the top side where the solo kill just happened, there is a Cutlass there, a Dagger in hand as well. Curse now returning to lane. And should be able to abuse this lane even further now. Ha now has the healing to match against Jinu, which is why you see the early executioner's calling picked up there for the Aatrox. But even just the slow that can come out with this Cutlass can be really difficult for Jinu to deal with. It helps in landing the flawless duet or even chasing down your victim's curse. The first item Blade of the Wrong King on Irelia has been annoying. Jinu's going to do this again. Vanguard's Edge. Is he trying to flash over that wall? Well, he's into World Ender. He does make it, but almost gets solo killed again. He was waiting to see if that mark would drop, but it didn't in time. Now, Hacker. Hey, jungle time. Nice kick back into the wall here, but Jeje. Yeah, yeah. Bit too much damage here for the Trundle. Flash over the wall from EDG, and I have to say, EDG's early pathing was great until the five minute mark. Yeah, JJ trying to take that fight against Hacker when you've just lost top lane. Icon can roam across. It's a dangerous call, and Hacker even coming out on top of that trade. So now OMG getting in control, and look at Hacker. He's realized, look, if we force JJ back, Jinu's out of lane, we can go towards this Rift Herald without any of our moving bot lane up antics. No kick, no flash here on JJ. Icon waiting. Level 8 Echo with the parallel conversions plus the Chrono Break to break JJ's back if he comes into range. But you're right, the pressure comes through. Curse here, Icon returns as well. Rift Herald for OMG, and what a recovery in this early game to win across the lanes. Two quick kills onto both of those solo laners is gonna mean so much for OMG. And this Rift Herald means they can start cracking open these turrets and getting more gold into the pockets of the crucial members. No flash on Jinu. This is an easy gank for Hacker. Again, we're gonna see a dead Aatrox if this goes forward. Flawless Duet, you're gonna be dodged away from, but Pillar against the wall. Jinu now under turret. I don't think OMG care. Hacker wax him with a stick for the third kill of OMG's game. I wasn't sure if we were just going to see the Rift Herald plonk down straight off the bat, but mm. Curse wants to get the back off, want to make sure that they're using that elsewhere on the map from the looks of it. Just a great, great turn of events. 
I'm glad we don't have a boring game here whatsoever. And I love watching OMG when they get leads like this because they're so good at snowballing it. They have a 75% win rate when they're ahead at 15 minutes. And when we start to look at this composition that really shines when it's ahead and it can dictate the tempo of the game, it's only going to exemplify that even more for OMG. One minute 20 until we see the Cloud Dragon though. So for EDG, keep your eyes on the prize, as Dagda was saying before, about accelerating with these dragons and forcing OMG to make a decision. Put them in a bad position here and EDG could reclaim some of that gold that was theirs originally. And this is the thing for EDG, you can never really count them out. They have a 40% win rate when they're behind a 15. It's the highest in the league. Mm. They are the comeback kings, and I want to see now in this situation where they've been put a little bit behind, if they can find these avenues to come back into this game. But right now you're looking oh towards no. the top lane because OMG is still in that driver's seat. Into the world, and a Vanguard dead. Jinu, are you ready to die again? But flushing away from the Sonic Wave. Jeju with a good shadow means he gets there before Hacker. Icon and Scout have both roamed up though, so this is a three-man play on the top side of the map. Parallel Convergence is zone away simply for the turret right now. The Rift Herald going to be placed down. And JJ says what to do. Scout coming in as well. Can they stop this one? No way, Jose. Two versus three. The turret's gone. I think EDG thought it was going to survive. And Scout goes too far forward. Now they can get this second charge here as well. They can try and push down this tower if they want. There's a lot of damage between these three members. Massive mistake from EDG. The inner will go down, Dagda. And OMG are up by a bunch of gold. And that is a fantastic play from OMG. Not only do they get this top lane, two towers cracked open, they get that gold onto Curse and onto Icon. These are the two carry members for OMG right now. You can't try and pressure too heavily now on this top side as OMG. So at the moment, our top lane is going to be oh, done DB, for. It's for bot icon. Lane. It's going to be followed up as well. Curse is on his way. So if that doesn't kill him, he will soon. A kick from JJ, but Cold is trying to line up the dazzle. The floor duet on to make go, and OMG is still hunting. OMG just don't stop. They make the play in the top side of the map. Straight away TPs to the bottom side. And now they can get this dragon for themselves. Stop that win condition we were talking about from EDG and getting a bunch of these dragons for themselves. And they can look to get some terror plates onto SMLZ. This early game from OMG is hotter than Netflix and chill right now. We're going to get a Cloud Drake going down second here with a Mountain Rift spawning soon. And although OMG can't get that bottom lane turret, more plating to the Sifer, who has gone for the Mana Mune as well. Usually we see an Essence Reaver coming in for the Sivir so that then you can start to get a bit more mana for yourself. But this time SMLZ is opting to go instead towards this Mana Moon. It'll give an earlier spike in the mid game, but also still provide that mana that you love to have on Sivir to clear out these waves super effective. Isn't it fun because recently with builds, Corky, Draven we've seen over yeah. in the LEC, where people have been experimenting more with Mana Moon, the item that gives you, as you said, you know, that later game scaling, plus that big spike when you hit Murumana. Uh, I'm excited to see how hard SMLZ hits, especially when he gets towards those zeal items as well. But look towards Hope. Hope's almost towards Blade of the Room King and finishing the Cull. So it's not all bad news for EDG. The 80 carry still getting towards that point where he can start dealing damage. Look at the Blade of the Rune King already completed on Curse, though, with the Phage. He's a big boy right now. World there. End of Time onto Curse. Can't get the chains to pull him back. EDG are trying, but OMG are not giving them the windows. So now we get to see, okay, how can OMG try and utilize the advantages they picked up onto Icon and onto Curse. There's no TPs available for them right now, but Icon can try and push this wave super aggressively and crack open this bottom lane turret. Once the bottom lane of EDG is gone, that's when the 131 can come in full swing, where you've got Curse pressuring on towards this bottom side tier two. You've got Icon potentially press pressuring onto an inhibitor turret in the bottom are in the top side, yeah. and in mid lane, you still got SMLZ who can push these waves super aggressively and try and take down this mid turret. It's kind of incredible that turret plating just went down on that note because OMG have been pushing this game so fast, so quickly with that teleport play we saw before. And although they won't be able to pick up the rest of the plating here, now with the weakened turret state, a bit more damage goes down. EDG is still trying to defend this one, but SMLZ is consistent. So uh, what I think is going to happen from OMG here is SMLZ shoving th this last wave. SMLZ and Cold will back and we'll see a big fight over towards this Rift Herald. OMG would really love to secure this to help them crack open these structures and get themselves set up for the rest of this minute. 
Look towards bot. JJ can be spotted out here on a ward. Meanwhile, towards the mid lane. Hacker going in aggressively as well. I'm just trying to drop some deeper vision behind this mid lane turret while the blue buff spawns. Icon looking for that pick with the blind parallel convergence. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you press W and you're not on vision, you don't see it until the orb starts flying through and coming down. So hard to react, especially if Icon has that assassination potential with the proto belt with the blasting wand in hand. SMLZ is sticking to the bot lane. EDG with the support from JJ, who were able to push in that bottom wave first, and now they're starting to roam. This isn't the end of the world for OMG, because they can still potentially crack open that bottom lane turret, but SMLZ has abandoned it. Ooh, this is bad. Oh, he's Yeah, and he's just dead. Bad is a great word. Let's be quite honest. That was a terrible call from OMG. They had SMLZ what? in the bottom lane. Oh, no. And now, onto the jungler. Hacker's going to get played in here. JJ finds his way. Two kills for Hope. OMG, you were playing so well. They could have just pressured SMLZ in the bottom lane to take that turret. You give up the Rift Herald, and then you, you're you fine. You've cracked open the two turrets. You can start that play we talked about in the 1-3-1. One, one. But instead, they look to fight in a four versus five. Mako finds a great hook to set things up. But then Hacker sticking around as well. What were OMG thinking? That 4K gold lead gone down to two. Icon going to try and stop the Vax here, but... You know that Mako will look for the hook if he can. In that play, two kills go over to the virus. He's now fed. And this is where OMG do not want to be. They are better off in small skirmishes where they've got two people, maybe a third, fighting off against EDG. But when it comes to these 5v5 or well, 4v5 in this scenario, it's going to be EDG favored because their composition does far more in that scenario. Game's back to a very relevant point for EDG. And I mentioned the 80 carry kills before. He picks up a pickaxe. He's still got to sell the cull, but sits on the life steal for now. Uh, Berserker Greaves also in the inventory. It seems to be building towards a hope game if this continues. And that's what we set up. This is how EDG have oftentimes played it. You've got Scout and Mako to try and make a pick at the start of the fight, but it's hope going for this on-hit Varus that's going to be the consistent damage in these fights to try and deal with OMG. And the beauty of having Varus in this composition against OMG is that Varus can tangle up Icon. He can wrap up Curse with that Chains of Corruption and make it a little bit easier for EDG to fight in these scenarios. A lot of CC chain as well from the Syndra, the Aatrox, the Lee Sin, the Thresh. Everyone does their job. As JJ is now looking for SMLZ. Rift Hill put down. I don't know if he wanted to ward in there, but... Still, it's going to go down for the pressure play with five members mid of EDG. And OMG don't have Icon. But Icon's getting that bottom lane turret, so they can actually maybe... No, not quite. But it still means that EDG get control of River. And now it's a little bit dangerous for EDG. A lot of flanks coming in from OMG. And they have to try and protect Hope. Icon's in a great position here. Parallel convergence going down. The dragon zoned away from. Jinu is trying to find this Echo with... Now the Dragon going to go in for the steal. JJ does get it, and he's out. Vanguard's edge used from Curse. What the heck as the Taragolt comes through, but not before Hacker dies. World Ender now. Juno wants to follow this one up. SMLZ on the run, and OMG have just gone the complete opposite direction from the early game. There was no need for them to fight at that Dragon. They could have backed away. They had a minion wave that was meant to hit that mid lane turret. And now caught on out. Great scout of the week with the Thresh Death Sentence on a ward. SMLZ backing on a ward. I don't know what has happened to OMG in the last couple of minutes, but EDG are capitalizing on it so well. We said, hey, look, you can never count EDG out. They have a 40% win rate from behind, and they are doing just that right now, finding opportunities and punishing the mistakes of OMG. We were showcasing Curse. Uh, I guess before we saw all of that, and Curse was in this early game set up with the solo kill over Jinu. Curse is the rookie, remember. Jinu is the, the veteran who came through, who has been like a top laner to aspire to. The Riven main, by the way. Much like the Shy. But uh, this game, it had been about Curse until as of late. OMG now, their gold lead is only about 600 over EDG. It will expand with the turret taking from Icon in the bottom lane. JJ's still here. Sonic Wave into the back. Now, Kick is still available here. Icon with the Parallel Convergence uses the Chrono Break, but he doesn't have much matter to play with as everyone's here now as well. Icon in the solo lane is no more. Scout gets the shutdown. OMG are slow to react to this play. They have, we're trying to move Curse down, 
but it doesn't matter. They're able to still, with SMLZ, take this mid lane turret. You can see now that SMLZ is working up towards that Essence Reaver and realizes that all my job in this game is, is wave clear bot. And that's all I'm doing, clearing, clearing, clearing. Mana galore with Essence Reaver and Mana Moon. You want to see the Harbin buff? Right, now, from what I've been told, Baron control rate is the top one. I apologize if that's wrong. Curse, however, wants to find something onto Jinnah, but yet again, EDG are moving as a pack this game. JJ is even coming down now as well. Vanguard's dead. OMG, you talk about slow to react. Well, Hack is now here. That death sentence probably would have killed him. I don't know, Dagda. I don't know. But the way 131s are supposed to work is get waves so they're pushing at the same time. They'll all collapse at a similar point and EDG can't make plays like this. The problem for OMG is they're not setting up correctly, where Icon just died. Okay, well, he's back in base. Now Curse is getting ganked on the bottom side, and Jinu has Hacker chasing his tail, but there's no one from OMG here to actually work with Trundle. I guess just take a step back here. We will wait for the next Dragon to come through. Two minutes time until Mountain. Uh, EDG picked up the first Mountain. They're on their way to the Soul. And that conversation about the soul and the distraction, and what they can do with it, comes into handy. So let's look and see now, as that dragon is coming up, how OMG are going to set up. Their waves are in pretty good shape right now, where SMLZ is pushed in mid. Yes, you'll have Scout shove that wave back in top, but H Curse is here to collect. So right now, OMG can set up for this 1-3-1, and that's where they'll be happiest, where they can have... The waves push in, Hacker and SMLZ move over to take the dragon, while the rest of OMG are doing work on the sidelines. Right now, Icon's just been clearing out wards as he's been pushing those side lanes as well. You can see Curse up towards the top side. Uh, nicely set out there, Dagda. You can see Curse is level 12. He's got his two items now. Uh, we have often seen paired with Blade of the Rune King the Black Cleaver, so that's quite normal here in a progression path of item builds. Well, look towards mid lane, Icon with the Proto Belt. He picked up the Seeker's Armor Guard, but now it looks like the Lich Bane will be the second item on the way, with an Essence Reaver also in hand for SMLZ. And there's the Lich Bane you were just talking about, Hysterics, and this uh, ups the ante when it comes to that side lane pressure. So Icon will be able to work quickly through these turrets. It's going to be a while before he gets to the turret on this top lane, though, with how many turrets have already been cleared out by OMG. He can't overextend that far to actually put pressure on that top lane inhibitor turret just yet. I also noticed that we're, we're coming into this and I, I've been very cruel to OMG. I think I'll take a step back and apologize. I noticed that OMG is still hitting decent points and they're still even with gold and EDG. So after all is said and done, I still expect the next fight to be pretty damn competitive. I'm also looking towards EDG with the Gwyn's Rage Blade, Morellonomicon. Not quite the death dance there for Jinu second as well. I think it's more of a disappointment for OMG because we have high expectations for this squad. We talk about them being the, some of the best snowballers in the LPL when they get a lead, but this game hasn't showcased that. Now they need to be careful though. It's out of the week yet again. Damage starting to come through on Cold. Remember, oh, he's got a Shirelia's Reverie as a EDG. Don't want to walk into that choke, especially not with a pillar and parallel conversions. You're dead. Death sentence on the hacker. The chain to corruption doesn't land from hope. Poke damage starting to come out. EDG looking for JJ to find a way in and get the kick flash. These front to back fights, though, that we're starting to see now as they move into River, favor EDG. Hooks, Scatter the Weeks, these can all hit me multiple members of OMG, whereas Icon and Curse want to be coming in on a flank. But he's on a ward, so they can see this preemptively here. Zoned out by it, nevertheless, with the parallel convergence. Here comes the redemption to heal them up. They're back full. 4K on Dragon. Keep your eyes on Mako. He's fishing for these hooks here. There's so many crucial members of OMG he could get onto. Reset of Dragon, though. EDG have priority. The poke comes through. The ultimate from Tarot gets used and cursed into the back line. Has free roam, kicked on back. Well, Junior does the dirty work in the backside himself. But JJ follows this one through while EDG now need to get Hope into position. But OMG with a dazzle. Force away the flash from Mako. Hope still autoing away. Curse is there, but way too deep. Hack almost died, Cold the same, TP coming in. It's not just over yet, Icon's looking for hope. Can he 1v3? Well, if OMG want to come in, maybe he can. Face dive is there, Mako hooks him in, the Dazzle is on top of him as well. Into three people now looking for the ulti. As he goes golden to waste time, he can ult on the spot, but he gets hooked in again. Face dive flushes away, Icon does it. I love these fights, OMG managed to come back in after all is said and done with Icon to take out hope. It looked disastrous to begin with for OMG, with a great scatter of the week coming in from Scout, but 
Now EDG with a teleport of their own. They're trying to make sure they secure this dragon. The third dragon it would be for EDG after all said and done. Although a nice play from Icon. We're just back to where we started with EDG heading towards Soul Point. This is the thing though. OMG, we talked about wanting to use their side lane pressure towards their advantage. If they had had Curse and Icon pushing these side lanes first before turning towards this dragon, this would have been a very different story. But when they group up in River like this, you're setting yourself up for that scatter the weak, for the hooks from Mako, and with the Jinu being able to provide enough of a front line for Hope, that's where EDG will shine. Hope actually didn't get to do a huge amount in this fight because of a great pillar of filth from Hacker, but you can't rely on that in every team fight. Curse could feel it there at the end. You can see the way that fight was going where he got the engage with the ultimate from Tarek. He felt it and Icon did as well. Mako's fresh has been so on point with these hooks. He's been able to keep Icon out and Curse at bay has given Hope so much breathing room oh. in these fights. Icon eventually gets onto him, but look how much was invested to do so. We apologize to anyone watching on Twitch right now. Uh, unfortunately, a couple issues with stream. We are getting that fixed ASAP for you. Uh, apologies again. As we return to the game state, though, OMG still with a 1k gold lead. Soul point, as we mentioned, for EDG as well. And it's still about those items. Muramana now fully completed with the BF Sword for SMLZ. So let's now see again if OMG can get off to these side lanes. With Baron up and EDG controlling the pace of these waves in the mid lane, they can move in towards River to get control, but look at where the waves currently are on the rest of the map. Top pushing in, bot pushing in. This is where OMG want to be. Spun out by a warn. OMG the same as well here. Uh, the top wave there, still pushing through. I really don't know why Icon keeps trying to group with the team. I want him to be in this side lane. You've got the Lich Bane, you've, you've got the ability to get onto Scout and kill him. You're 3 1 and 3 here as this Echo, but instead, grouping up with the team, and it makes it easier for EDG to deal with these side waves. Jinu's coming up. Jinu is moving up here, Dagger, and Curse is not. He's going back to the wave. Now, you mentioned TP. Jinu there at the start of the fight can run into them. He's backing away slowly though, so we're just kind of clearing out waves. do -si do yet again here. But EDG very far back in this fight. There's not a huge amount of control wards in the pockets of OMG right now though. So when they're pushing these waves in, they'd ideally like to be able to move into the Baron area to get that vision down. But unfortunately, they just don't have the itinerary there right now to help with that. 27 minutes in. What a fun time to be alive here. I don't know what to make of this game, Dagna. Well, the thing here is that we've got EDG who are consistently looking to try and get these fights. If they can get these front-to-back fights in corridors or in the river like this, it's great for them. And OMG, we want them playing off in these side lanes, but oftentimes they're grouping here to go and join these fights. So the early game that OMG got off to a great start with no longer is a factor because they keep gifting these team fights to EDG. OMG in the past have been... What will we call them? A, a fairly nice surprise here in the start of spring. But reality's kind of caught back up to them. And if we talk about OMG as of late here, before we get towards this Baron, remember that they are on a two-loss streak. You could say it's figuring out. You could say that teams are starting to work on them. But OMG, as they work on the Baron, we'll see how EDG approach this OMG squad. This is perfect setting for Mako and Scout. Watch how they pick off people with the CC. Three man scatter the week yet again. Mako doesn't land the hook. They engage onto him. Now this could be good for OMG, but Vanguard Dench doesn't land. That's a four man cosmic ratings, but I think OMG need to get out of there. That's scatter the week. Beautiful again. They knock back Cold. They pull him back in. Hacker has to flash away. JJ's into the back of the play. And Jinu says, go away. SMLZ running further and further up the river while Scout just keeps styling. I got a curse. We're the ones leading the retreat charge away for OMG. Once the Vanguard's Edge missed and Mako was doing a great job of keeping Icon out, they had nothing left in the tank. And this is the problem with OMG. They want to be looking for flanks with Icon and Curse so they have access to Hope to Scout in the back line. So you can't hit these big Scatter the Weeks from Scout or land these hooks from Mako. Instead though, they keep opting to run head first into EDG and EDG will say thank you very much. I'm going to pick up a few more kills for ourselves and stop you from taking this battle. I've been waiting for that awesome flank from Icon, that big parallel convergence, that big ulti. Still haven't gotten it here. And in this game one so far, 
Scout has been more consistent. Scout has been, I think, the better mid laner, although the score doesn't show it. Well, it's just OMG not playing to their win conditions. This is a very rare sight, because usually OMG are really good when they get to this point. And now Icon in a bad position yet again. He has the Chrono Break there waiting for him, but he's just dead. Um, Well, ladies and gentlemen, do not take that for face value. If I see a... <laughs> I think we might have to reset that one. Yeah, that's really that not was fair. a little bit of... Uh, that's really not fair at all. Um, right. Well, <laughs> let's see what happens now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to say about that one. But either way, we can look back at this game so far and we can go... OMG started off great. Got the advantages onto Icon and Curse and I thought this was OMG's game. They had several gold plates going over into the Aurelia. They had it going into the Echo and I thought this was where we're going to start seeing this 1-3-1 one, one come through. They can spread out. They can start to take these turrets. It didn't really matter too much that they'd taken the two turrets on the top side. It was just going to issue be an issue a little bit where you couldn't have, say, Curse or Icon, whoever's pushing in that top lane, get onto that inhibitor turret as easily because they'd be overextended in comparison to the rest of the map. But they never opted to go for this. Instead, they're consistently running into these rivers to fight for dragons, to fight for the Baron, and running head first into EDG. And as we said, Mako's happy with that. He's got a field day. If he picks off Curse, if he gets Icon, well, then he can kill them fairly quickly. And the rest of EDG are doing a great job of, with the Chains of Corruption, kiting back once that Cosmic Radiance comes out from the Tarek and just moving away from it. Once the Cosmic Radiance is down, they can turn at that fight. Apologies to anyone who's just tuned in. Uh, we are in a pause. We're not sure what has happened. Uh, Icon was killed randomly. Everyone sat mid yeah. for a, a, about 10 seconds. Uh, so we're going to find out what the issue is then, and then we'll get back to you. Uh, but here in game one, we're at a standstill until that gets worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, I <laughs> actually just, yeah, not sure about that one. But uh, yeah, further to your point, a lot of LPL teams can't side lane. Sometimes I, I think sometimes they think it's impossible, even with the comp to do so. One of the teams that actually really impressed me was JDG. We saw mm. them sideline brilliantly yesterday, and I thought we might have seen the same from OMG here today. But unfortunately, that's not been the case, um, and I'm not sure why they opted to go for this Aurelia pick. If they were going to go for this style, you could have gone back towards some of these more comfort picks for Curse, like the the beefier, tankier top laners, and then set up for a good team fight. But Going for this Aurelia, yes, Curse has looked great in the early game on us, even picking up a solo kill, mm. but that's not where they're trying to win their fights, is in team fights is a no-go. I've just been told that OMG had a network issue, and that's why they, there's been a pause. OMG's network has uh, collapsed, apparently, and we'll see where we go from there, I guess. At least we know that everyone's in the team house together because everyone stopped yeah. dead at the same time. Whereas if there was like one person still running around, it's like, oh no, well, we know well, who's not there. <laughs> I mean, like EDG stopped up and like, they go, oh, Icon just stood there, you know? Because yeah. JJ was looking at him and was like, I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to kill him yeah. anyway. Uh, it's like the person in your solo queue that goes AFK and you're like, it's a ranked game. I'm going to kill him. And especially it. with so much on the line in this game, EDG can secure their playoff spots with this. So I can't really fault them. Like, yeah. I'm going to lose a little bit of LP if I lose that ranked game. There's a lot more on the line here for JJ. On that on that note, right, like, if we talk about what's on the line, remember the EDG 8-5 and five with a win here, they secure playoffs. They secure playoffs here for 2020 Spring, and they secure top esports for playoffs. Plus, they move that magic number up to 9. Mm -hmm. So for OMG in the future, it could be easier to hit that. Um, that doesn't make much sense. But OMG, if they win here, they kick down DMO Sooning, uh, Vici, and BLG all in one fell swoop. So it's a big series to pretty much conclude the split. And that could could potentially be why we're seeing network issues. You know, people tinkering in the background, like, keep my dream alive here. But oh my God. this is where we've got to look and see if, uh, if OMG can try and set themselves up for success it feels very much like they haven't been trying to make anything work with the composition that they have yeah so going back into this i think again try and set up those side lanes they're getting them prepped and then just abandoning them which, which is the part that's frustrating me the most whereas for edg look they're doing a great job they've figured out hey look if we just go towards these objectives chances are we'll stumble across omg there and we can pick them off in the way that we want to so edg have done a great job of bringing themselves back into this game and playing to where their composition is and on the side of omg like it's such a fun composition as well it's a yeah. composition we don't really see and then you're like okay early game looks fantastic and it just fell off a cliff it's decision-making that really hurt them in the end. 
And I don't think in the past when I've casted OMG, I don't remember going, oh, d this decision making is awful. Because once they get on that roll, yeah. they normally keep going, as you said in the early game. Well, that's why I was looking at the stats we have there. 64% win rate off of first blood, 72% win rate after first tower, 75% win rate when ahead of 15 minutes. Like these guys snowball like crazy. But this is not the game where we've seen it. They got first blood, they got their first tower. They were ahead of 15 minutes, and now we're back to dead even. So this this is not the OMG that we came to expect, and their decision-making has always been really good from ahead. It's their decision-making went behind that we've criticized. Yeah. But unfortunately, it has been the decision-making went ahead in this game that has really cost them. OMG does fit the trend, though, recently. LGD E-Stars, the lost streak has started, and it's such a rough time. Imagine their win against LGD. This would yeah. be their playoff series as well, oh. right? This will be the series that secures playoffs for them too. Because even if OMG win here, they only get eight. They do not secure playoffs for themselves just yet. It's about the next coming two series. And OMG only have WE left. On the I know. 20th. And that's why I'm looking at it going, I say WE are super happy with the, the, the loss to LGD that we saw, saw coming in from OMG. Same yeah. with like Rogue Warriors. These are teams that are all looking to try and keep their dreams alive. But for teams like Rogue Warriors, it becomes a lot more difficult. They've got FPX coming up in their future, and they have to win that series. Yeah. But definitely for WE, this is a team that could look to upset OMG. And this is why this is such a crucial series for OMG. Having that one extra win could be the difference between them having the game difference when we get towards that Monday or them falling behind thanks to that loss. Plus, you want higher seeding. We talked about the playoff mm. bracket before. Fifth to eighth is still very important, even though you go into round one. Remember that fifth to eighth, fifth versus eighth, sixth versus seventh. You don't want to be eighth because yeah. you versus the, the next best team that isn't in the top four. And last time around, we saw JDG were like the ones to make the run, on, surprisingly, but it was like, oh, the, the position doesn't really favor them. I'm looking at those top four teams, though, and I don't want to face any of well, them. All of them point. look like they're on point. JDG in particular, like you just mentioned, they looked stellar in their game yesterday. Yep. I mean, we've been calling them kind of the mosh pit ARAM team for quite a while, but that was not what we saw come out of them. They're starting to reinvent themselves. E-Star are looking to reinvent themselves. They're starting to play much more heavily towards the top side and having Shell by as their carry, so now opening up new avenues for them. We've been talking about FPX, the dark technologies that they've been bringing out and the new strategies they've been working with it looks so much more difficult to lock down our top four lpl teams to a certain style and when you're coming into playoffs having that many threatening different styles can work wonders for you and if you can't play a one three one if you can't play a composition like omg that's what separates you from being exactly. a playoff team and not here so uh, omg need to find their groove here in this game if you have just joined us yet again we apologize for the delay omg have had network issues that is being resolved i haven't been told about anything like a chrono break as of yet uh, but with Icon dying, I would not be surprised. We'll get we'll get confirmation as to whether they've turned we'll it off and see. on again soon. Yeah. Um, hopefully that will fix the issue because that's all I ever get told. Yeah. Great uh, tech support. <laughs> yeah. That's all, that's all you... Tech all support you with Dagda. You got you, this. All you have to do. <laughs> um, but right now, if we talk about OMG's story coming into this split, OMG have been a, like, a bottom-tier team for a while now. Remember that Since in... Since 20 2014, really? Well, the last time I remember them having the... The, the thing is, remember success. that OMG had success during the regular season in 2017. So True. in 2017, yeah. they made spring playoffs and they made summer playoffs. And why I'm hyped about SMLZ being in this roster and why in the start of the split, remember we all had our conversation and I was like, SMLZ is back with five. You know, like all of us were like, hang on, this is a re, uh, reuniting of the bottom lane of OMG that went to playoffs because Cold is five. He's just changed his name. SMLZ and five with that bottom lane, the... The Arden Sensor meta, by the way. Oh, stop. That was not a fun time. It looked really good. It was for me. Was, <laughs> hang on, you're a support, <laughs> I'm a support main. I play engaged supports. I like being Ooh. active and involved. Dude, I'm a karma main. You know, I played... You disgust me. Who else did I play? I played little Lulu. No. Yeah. They're the worst champions. It's just like... Pew! It's like, that doesn't do anything. I want to be Alistair. I want to <laughs> be fresh. I want to be involved in these fights. Not with Arden plays. Sensor, man. When you got... It was life. It gave you, like health back, didn't it? Oh, it was silly. Oh, that was, so, it was silly. so silly. Magic damage, attack speed, and health back. Yeah. All you have to do is press, press E. <laughs> press E. That was, was my favorite point. Was, no. But, like, remember that <laughs> OMG have had a... Coming back to the point, OMG, yeah, like, in recent history, have been really rough. They've been alongside Beachy at the bottom of the league. And especially in 2019 last year, they didn't look great. 
right? Yeah. And it's good to see that now OMG are challenging for that playoff position, but I don't want them going back to what we saw last year, where it was OMG that were always inconsistent and that we couldn't trust. Yeah, see, for me, it's always the OMG, I remember, of, like, Cool and that those kind of guys who are playing Good in the mid days. lane. And yeah. then, obviously, in 2017, Icon came into the team and he replaced some of those. But th those were the guys that I remember as the big successful OMG, where we saw them really reach for those upper limits. And it's nice to see OMG, at least now, still celebrating some of this new success with, as you said, SMLZ coming back after he left for Rogue Warriors back in the day. These are the teams that... All right, this is the team that I'm hoping can really push them over the edge, but they've still got to find the success in the scenarios like this where they do get an early. To reiterate, 2019 summer, 16th. So that was dead last in the league, yeah. 2 and 13. Uh, 2019 spring, 14th, 4 and 11 with game score. 2018 summer, 7th. Uh, 2018 spring in the individual conference, 6th. So it's like, OMG can't go back. And this is great. That's why this is exciting, because if we go back to the roster that we talk about with SMLZ5, Icon, Jerko, and World 6 were there, and Xiang in the top lane, that was a roster you could really get behind. The roster yeah. that went to Rift Rivals as well. So this fills you with hope, but again, we do have to get back in the game. And we have to compare with EDG, who in this first game do look like they are in charge and are in control of this big ballooning gold lead. And it's nice to see EDG coming back in with JJ and Jinu as well, because we were looking at, okay, Audi's doing reasonably well. Junjia, despite his first game on the new news, then started to really impress on picks like the Sejuani and the Jarvan. So EDG as a whole have started to come together. And JJ in this game, at least to begin with, these three ganks in the early game set up EDG so That's well true. for success and was the real reason, to be honest, that they actually have a hope still coming into this game. Uh, we are still waiting for this pause to finish off. Uh, EDG's network issue, still waiting on that one. Uh, their internet has died, and uh, no word as of yet. But coming back to story time for Jinu, I actually have been really impressed with Jinu this year. I think he's doing a really good job. Yeah. And when you look back at him, when he like he used to be coming from LGD back in 2016, playing under Marin and Acorn. So I had a lot of expectations for this guy because if you're training under names like that, you're going to pick up a few things. And as you said, the Riven main, very much a mechanical player. I was looking forward to seeing that come in. Unfortunately, in this game, he ended up in a really bad matchup. But definitely, we are expecting to see high things from Jinu as we start to go forward into the, well, the rest of the season. <laughs> the, uh, the splits, not so much, though. That's the one's nearly over. I mean, like, Jinu was the LGD top laner, right? Like, he yeah. was the top laner who was with them up until uh, the end of 2018. For two years, he was uh, alongside them. And Jinu trained under, yeah, like, Marin uh, when he was on LGD, uh, when Imp was on LGD as well. But he never really got his time to shine. He never really got his starting position. And back when he went on B5 for 2019 spring, yeah. remember... Uh, and that was a better V5 as it well. It was, yeah. Only <laughs> Much just, better. <laughs> only just, though. <laughs> they won uh, a game. With That's Corn the, and White Ball even. Pepper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with Ben 4. But it's interesting, because I'm looking at Jinu, and like, I'm looking at his solo queue. He's known as like the Fiora Master. And everyone's expecting big things Dude, from Jinu coming he's in. he's a Riven player. I know. This is why I'm like, I want to see him on things where he can do some really good stuff. But the Aatrox, not so much in this game. But definitely Jinu. He has high expectations set on him just off of the legacy he's built for himself since that 2016 LGD. But he has he joined in 2019 summer, right? He came in over Ray because remember that Ray people remember from C9 yeah. back in the you know back in the days Ray was on EDG and I thought Ray was a great top laner. Jinu comes in and starts playing out of his mind <laughs> on EDG in 2019 summer, gets them into playoffs, and uh, from there, unluckily, they weren't able to push forward. But Jinu building his legacy on EDG. And coming back in versus, like, Audi, I think Audi had a great time, but you can see the differences competitively between them. And it feels like EDG is where a lot of these players are trying to build their legacy. I mean, we talk about Jinu coming from under names like Marin and Acorn. You've got Scout, who came over from under Faker off of SKT, and he was even known as Faker's shadow for so long because of how much he played a similar style with the Azirs, the LeBlancs, the Sindras that were even seen come into this game. But he had to move across to EDG, come over to the LPL to find the success and now he's become a household name here for EDG and has been the focal point ever since he came over. Still waiting for this network issue. I mean, this is why, you know, you got to get that backup router going, right? Got to get the backup router going. If you are, they, they would have, they'd have a backup network, surely, wouldn't you? I'm assuming so. You'd have a backup yeah. network. You're a gaming house. You'd have a you'd, yeah. You'd have a backup network, especially if you know you have to play from home for this. Yeah. Place. I feel like that would be the first thing to invest in. 
you, you, you'd think so. Um, while we do wait for that, I mean, like, we're kind of just talking story here. And, and this being a playoff series, uh, there is kind of a lot to digest. Uh, just remember at the moment that our playoffs usually get decided within the last couple of days. Yeah. Like last year. You know, I think it was actually the final day where we had to find out if it was WE or LNG in playoffs. And it came down to, uh, like, one single series. And this time around, it's the exact same where... It's not might not be the exact last day, but one of them. Uh, well, it is kind of for OMG versus mm -hmm. WE. So myself and Munch were cracking the code last night oh. looking at OMG versus WE. Code. So if OMG end up losing this series, they go in 7 and 8. If they end up winning this series, they go in 8 and 8. Yep. WE have another game in tow that they can both go in 7 and 8 and 8 and 8. But that last series, even if you go 2 and 1 today or 1 and 2 for the, the other series with WE, it can still come down to that very last game as to who's going to be the play the team to advance because game difference is going to play such a factor the ending of, you can still end up with eight and eight or whatever way you want to work it so this is really important for omg if they could solidify a win here then they give themselves the, a little bit more in that game difference which could be the decision maker against them and we because we are currently sitting in that ninth place spot because remember we'll crack in the code ourselves a little bit before mm -hmm. broadcast uh, we worked out that DMO, Sooning, BLG, and VG absolutely out confirmed, yeah, done, right? Done, done. Rogue Warriors were like, hang on a minute. What is their condition? Because if you look on standings right now, Rogue Warriors are a negative four win rate, right? Yeah. 15 and 19. Their game difference is not looking good to the point that if OMG win this series, I thought, well, can Rogue Warriors catch up? Yeah, see, Rogue Warriors are super easy. All they have to do is just 2 0 FPX. Ah. You know, dead easy. Anyone yeah. can do that. <laughs> they need two zeros because if yeah. they don't get two zeros, they go to a negative game difference, and most likely OMG should be able to or, or WE confirm that spot with knocking out Rogue Warriors. So Rogue Warriors is a bit of a fickle one right now. They need to perform outstandingly well, uh, and teams like OMG and WE need to not go to three games even yeah. in a loss. They need to be z yeah. two zeroed by the enemy teams. So Rogue Warriors is hard. LGD right now, you'd be thinking they're fourteenth, but they've only played. 13 games. They've got the three more series more to games go. Than yeah. yeah, and they're one of the ones that, again, are playing on that Mega Monday we've now added yeah. thanks to Memorial Day that happened Saturday long ago. But this is still teams that we still we are looking at to go, okay, they can still make these runs. And you've got to keep looking at how many series people have in hands. Because as you were talking about, for the likes of Vici, for Suni, for these teams that don't have as many games left in the bank, they're not going to be able to catch them. Whereas LGD, who is sitting in fourth place, can still make that run. Uh, LGD right now, uh, we were talking about this yesterday because remember, he, he, LGD losing yesterday, for me, yeah. was a surprise at least. That was a really good Did you BLG versus LGD was amazing. Right? I only got to see part of it. I was trying to prep for, well, this, I know. this series in RNG. You think, like, <laughs> we we have to watch a lot of LPL series. There's a like, lot of LPL. We have to watch a lot of VODs. We have to watch yeah. a lot of VODs. Uh, we do need to rest at some point as well. Uh, LGD have FPX, JDG, and Rogue Warriors, which was the hardest kind of be like, oh, this is a really rough schedule apart from Rogue Warriors. So LGD can make eight, but then it's game difference again, right? They're at a negative three game difference right now. Uh, I'm pretty certain right now it's going to be OMG or WE. I don't think anyone makes that dream run, just personally. I agree, but I think what makes this the most interesting is when we start to look towards summer as well. Because Vici have now really started to find them, found themselves and they look really good coming into this. DMO, who we have later today, have started to look a lot better at like they're laying the foundations that they can yep. build a summer success story off of. BLG as well, we're still a bit all over the place with BLG. But definitely there are these teams like Rogue Warriors and WE that even if they don't quite make it, they are still very much in contention when we come to yep. summer because of how much success they found in the later portion of our spring split. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, we have had a pause due to OMG's network issue. I've been told that it's still not been resolved, so we are going to go to a break and wait for this one to fix itself. When we return, EDG OMG Game 1 will be right up.
。这一波小龙团很关键啊，帮布拉泽的硬抬龙团。对 ，ED 肯定也不打算让的，因为他们知道这个阵容现在也必须要跟你打。哇，你看杰斯这两炮，芒刺被打得有点残，打不用快速排眼，杰斯的效果打出来了。这边赶紧去打龙，细细细细。杜云碧跟刘青松这边杰斯没炮了，可以打，大招打住了，不错。二比六，这个蓝波爆炸伤害，杰斯被秒了，杰斯还是被杰斯直接被秒，背后也是有点要被融化了。贡哥虽然死，但他这一 Q 就到了杰杰，等能量，闪现 Q 过去，闪现二大 Q 给一个 R。嗯。而且他也不是很敢往下闪，省一个闪现。虽然自己的安德在下面，但看一下这边，很漂亮啊！这一边西野第一时间没有推，第二时间再推，那这样的话飞机也走不掉。不过西野能跑吗？一发 W， 差一点点血量，逼出了闪现，闪现一顶顶起 AD， 点燃套上。那这个时候的色提没有闪现，被泰坦的大招击飞，根本就下不来啊！皇子过来，这波是想打的。我看一下左翼身上捡了一个护盾，石头人在一个很诡异的位置。不过这里面是也看到了。这一波的五人抱团，五人抱团，我觉得苏宁更强啊，毕竟是一个大招流阵容来了，再见。这什么神仙团战啊？闪现 R 四个，然后配合女枪大招大四个，还搞了四个。嗯。中路这边依然放卢轩一个去单带，其他人在下路这边给兵线的压力。不过大龙 buff 时间马上就要到了，应该是推不掉什么塔了。哎，吸了一下 ，King 那边血量有点低，这边这飞走晒在脸上了。卡莎把左边秒，但计划解了一下，卡莎好像可以活下来，但是被卢克遇到了。卢克这大招下来之前，卡莎活了。南风这里的话也是加入自己的闪现，乐园被推死。这一波会是一个翻盘的讯号吗？这波是打了一个大货拳，这零换三，好像要零换四了。哇、哦，卡莎最后进化，加闪现。山谷先锋放了保护来撞一头是可以的。哦，太坦克勾了过来，哇、哦，直接把这闪现逼了。哇，这两个人直接成八字形分开了。哎，这里波是想打的，这波这边反正控制一下帅哥，这边激了一下，接了一个二连串。金角的话，赶紧利用大招往后拉，哎，自己差点被烧死。哎，还真的被烧死了，红尘。这边的话，乐言哦，有个红 buff 还。这一波的话，拿到一个双杀的维鲁斯，一波零换四。Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the LPL. We apologize for the delay. There was a network issue with OMG. Uh, we do have an announcement. Uh, due to the network issue, according to the LPL Online official rules, 10.3.2.3, uh, we are going to resume the game as it is, I believe. So we will be jumping into this very, very shortly. We apologize for the delay. Now, the update is, I believe, Icon does stay dead from what we saw. When we went to the break, Scout altered him. Uh, the rest of OMG paused through the mid lane, and I believe from there we did back off and are now resuming the game from there. Again, apologies for the delay. We are back in, and the game is as it was. To be honest, I'm surprised we haven't had more of these as we're playing in an online league at the moment. We've been doing a great job to keep as much LPL on your screens as possible, and unfortunately it is such a crucial game where it happens, but still, we're back with EDG versus OMG, and also EDG, they picked soul. up the Mountain Soldier okay. in this. Well, let's, let's update everyone. The game state right now, uh, Curse does have a wit's end. That's why we're looking towards it. We're into the three item point, and OMG say, let's fight after that. We need to get back some gold. And on top of Mako, they will kill him. So OMG say, we're back now, and we get a crucial pick. The ult comes through from both Cold and Hope. And we've resumed into some action. JJ with the flanking position. And OMG can turn towards this Baron now as well. Keep your eyes on Icon. He's looking for the flank here. See if he can get on towards the likes of Scout and Hope. In a four versus five for 25 seconds now. And we're just gonna update you on how the game state is going, but I'll update you right now. We're towards a barren fight. So OMG have started this up. Keep your eyes on Hope and on Scout though. There's an opportunity still for a massive scout of the week or the steal from JJ. He's got the level advantage. Icon level 16 as well here. Jinu knows he's here, but into the phase rush or immediately into the back line on top of Hope, but he has to chrono break. OMG still on the Baron though at 2k. Going in for the steal and he finds it. Now with the AOE, EDG had the Baron, had the Mountain Soul, and they have the fight. Goodbye, OMG. Hope lives as well. Icon with not enough mana to get in there. And now with Icon, the last remnant, 
OMG have been wiped. It's a disaster for OMG. Not only do they lose to Baron, but by grouping up in this pit like that, they set up Scout for these massive Scout of the Weeks, picks off a whole bunch of people, and EDG, with these long death timers, could look to go for the end. We just came back. And it's over. Don't, don't make it end now. SMLZ's up in 10, cold in 10 as well. I don't know. They're still going. It's a five-man strong push right now. With the mountain soul, I guess they can take this up. I mean, I just stood up to cast again. you got to be joking. Game one's over. All right, let's have a different game too, I say. That was anticlimactic. Climactic. EDG 